thank you, Chairman Levin and members of the committee for inviting me to testify today. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to do so. The U.S.-China Business Council believes that China's exchange rate should better reflect market influences from trade flows. But we also believe that legislation will be counterproductive to reaching that goal, and I'll talk about why. First of all, most trade experts believe that addressing the exchange rate with countervailing duties would violate WTO rules. We do not think it is in the United States' interest to pursue measures that flout global trade rules. We would almost certainly find that path used by others against us in response. And we do not believe that losing a WTO case would strengthen our hand with China on the exchange rate issue. Second, we oppose legislation that's based on an estimate of the true value of the RMB. Exchange rate estimates are highly subjective. They vary greatly depending on who's doing the estimate and the assumptions they use. Ten different economists will give ten different answers, and at best, only nine of them are going to be wrong. Even the IMS chief of China mission said that estimates of the exchange rate don't do a good job and are not reliable. The U.S.-China Business Council further opposes legislation because we do not think it will achieve the intended goals. We and many respected economists do not believe that the exchange rate has as much of an impact on the U.S. trade deficit or on U.S. employment as many claim. Much of what the United States imports from China is product that we imported from elsewhere before, not things that were made here in the United States. The exchange rate appreciates the point that we no longer import something from China. Many, if not most cases, we would import that product from somewhere else, not make it back here in the United States. Now, the recent tariffs on imports of low-end Chinese tires under Section 421 of the trade law are a good example. Imports from China are down 26 percent as a result of the tariffs, just what you'd expect. But imports from Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Indonesia, Thailand, and Mexico have more than filled the void, and imports of low-end tires overall are 21 percent higher than before the tariffs. Furthermore, China's exchange rate appreciated nearly 20 percent between 2005 and 2008, but the U.S. trade deficit actually grew with China and didn't decline. So what to do to get to the goal of an exchange rate that better reflects those trade flows? We believe that we should continue the coordinated multilateral approach in this issue through all available channels. The multilateral approach has shown to be effective on other issues with China, such as China's indigenous innovation policies that received attention here a couple months ago. That issue is not fully resolved at all yet, and we have to keep up the pressure on it. But China has certainly paused the program and is rethinking its policies in the face of unified multilateral engagement. I was in China two weeks ago. I met with senior officials in a variety of government ministries in the central bank. Economists in China agree that China's exchange rate should better reflect market influences. It's in China's own interest. The problem is that this issue has become politicized in China, and the economics are being ignored as a result. U.S.-China Business Council's Beijing-based vice president was invited to participate in a discussion just yesterday at China's central bank. He was the only American there in a room full of China's best U.S. policy thinkers. He made strong arguments why China's exchange rate should better reflect market influences. Some agreed. However, he reported the near-unanimous view of these U.S. policy experts there that if the U.S. Congress pursues China, uh, China currency legislation, China should not move its exchange rate in response. The past is a useful guide. A few years ago, when Senator Schumer's legislation was under consideration, China's exchange rate appreciated about 4.5 percent over 17 months. When Senator Schumer withdrew his legislation and Treasury Secretary Paulson stepped in to engage China on the issue, China's currency appreciated about 13.5 percent over the next 22 months, or about twice as fast on a monthly basis. Let me be clear. The U.S.-China Business Council believes China's exchange rate should better reflect market influences. China's currency is probably undervalued by some amount, given that it's running global current account and trade surpluses. How much is China's currency undervalued? I don't know, and I don't think anyone knows for sure. A lot of factors impact exchange rates. It probably isn't as un undervalued as many here claim, and it impacts the U.S. trade deficit and employment perhaps less than many here claim as well. But the goal still has to be for China's exchange rate to show more movement. Frustrations are high, but legislation will help us get to the goal for the reasons explained above. As of today, China's currency has strengthened 1.5 percent since June's announcement of resumed rate flexibility, and that's about a 6 percent pace annualized. 
We need to continue to support the Obama administration's bilateral and multilateral engagement with China on this issue, and this committee should firmly direct Treasury Secretary Geithner to do so when he testifies tomorrow. Thank you very much.